Today marks a very important event in the channel's history. Today marks my 1000th video uploaded to YouTube. And it's been a crazy ride. And I thought to commemorate this event, today I wanted to share with you a little montage, a collection of clips from some of my first 1000 videos, some of the funnier moments along the way. I hope you guys enjoy this quick compilation. Hello everybody. Today we're going to review Manjaro Linux. Manjaro is a Arch-based Linux distribution. It is based on Arch Linux. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of really good things about Manjaro, but I've never actually used Manjaro. That's an interesting one. Hello Kitty, Skeleton, uh, Sodomized. I'm not sure what Sodomized is. Ooh, do we want to check that out? Yeah, why not? <laughs> How about Fortune, Pipe Symbol, Calsay, Dash F, and this time we're going to change to, instead of the cow, let's do the sodomized character. I'm not sure what this is going to be. I hope it doesn't get me demonetized. Oh my. <laughs> Demonetization is on its way. So I got the random. I use Xmonad Qtile in the awesome window manager, but I don't use i3 because that's for amateurs. I'm balling, shot calling, like my boy Richard Stallman. I see proprietary software and I toss them aside. I only use freeware. Try to get me to use closed source and you better beware because I'm coming at you hard and I won't quit until every man, woman, and child is running GNU slash Linux. It is often said that many Linux users, if not most Linux users, have an elitist attitude. We love to talk about how much better our operating system is compared to the alternatives. Sometimes we love to talk about how much Linux changed our lives, changed the way we work, sometimes just changed the way we interact with the world in general. And when non-Linux users hear us talking this way, they assume that we must be arrogant, elitist a-holes. But do we really have an elitist attitude? Yes, we do. But there is a reason we have this elitist attitude. It's because we are elite. It's not an attitude. It's a fact. I'm like our highness, the divinest. Our boy Linus says what he thinks. He's got no shyness. I'm like my boy Trump. I grab them hoes by the snatch. Peace, guys. Gotta go install Linux from scratch. Yeah, distro tube in the house. Peace. So the developers behind Manjaro recently decided they are going to no longer offer LibreOffice pre-installed on their ISOs. They're removing LibreOffice from their ISOs in favor of a proprietary Office solution called FreeOffice. That's right, they're ditching LibreOffice for proprietary garbage. Why don't we move to fish? I think everybody acknowledges that fish is the best shell available on Linux. We know that, right? I don't think it's, it's not debatable. But why are we still using Bash? Right? So I would definitely, on DT's OS, I would try to make the default system shell and definitely the default user shell fish. Welcome to another edition of WT. Windows Tube, the show where it's all Microsoft all the time because Microsoft knows best. Now, viewers often ask me, hey, WT, why don't you give other operating systems a try? Maybe give Linux a try. And specifically, they ask about that GNU Linux operating system. No, no, no. I've tried that thing. I tried GNU Linux once about 20 years ago, and I had to compile my own kernel. Think about that. Think about the horrors involved in something like that. What respectable operating system makes you compile your own software? But that's what these inferior operating systems like Linux force you to do because the Linux guys, they haven't even worked out how to run those .exe files yet. No, I'm happy where I'm at right here on Windows. I like to pay for my software because those Linux guys, they're just a bunch of cheapskates anyway. They're a bunch of free tards, right? This is going to make some people mad. 
The packaging format I would choose to use would be App Image. I would try to package everything in DT's repository as an App Image. You know why? Because not only would it work in DT's distribution, it would work on everybody's distribution. Everything I package for DTOS, I would be packaging it for every GNU slash Linux distribution because my packages will work on your distribution as well and it, it just makes complete and total sense. Why isn't anybody doing this? Of those scaremongering articles, right, uh, about, you know, updates, breaking people's systems. I think these stories are often overblown. Windows updates are actually quite safe, but maybe one or two people had issues with an update. And it looks like the issues involve things like broken Internet connections, uh, failure to boot and... You know what? Uh, th those are such minor problems. It's not even a story worth discussing. They're complicated to set up. It's it's complex. You have to config them. And no one, no one can possibly remember all those key bindings for their tiling window manager. It's impossible. The only reason you run a tiling window manager is style points, right? So... I hate tiling window managers. They're hard to work with and they lack features. They have to stay ahead of all the viruses and Trojans and ransomware and everything that's out there because, you know, Microsoft kind of leads in that industry. They lead in the virus market share. That's one area where the Linux guys, they, they don't even compete. Very, very few Linux desktop users even run an antivirus, right? <laughs> Another thing the Linux elitist loves to do, he loves to show off at the command line, he loves to do everything on the terminal. No one has to use a terminal these days. Linux has evolved. If you're using a terminal, then you are purposely making your life harder. Why? Why are you doing all that typing? What are you trying to do, right? Work up a case of carpal tunnel? Give us a beat, Richard. I like it. That's tight. Join us now and share the software. You'll be free. Hackers, you'll be free. And a similar question I need to answer is, Hey DT, I recently started using Linux. When does my hair fall out and when will I start vlogging outside my house? Uh, you're going to have to ask other Linux content creators this, you know, those that are actually bald and vlog outside their house all the time, because I'm not one of those guys. For one thing, I have hair. I shave my head. I am not bald. Repeat after me, all of you guys, DT is not bald. Well, let me get rid of that, and I'm just going to type RR, and I'm going to run it. Let me mute the desktop audio, because it will give me a strike, probably on YouTube if I run this with audio. So you guys won't get the audio, but you'll get the video. But I'll give you guys the uh, the audio if you want it. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around. Hey DT, proprietary doesn't necessarily mean garbage. And they're right. You know, I, I've kind of overdone it with the term proprietary garbage. It's tired. It's played out. I'm going to try to switch it up a little bit. It doesn't always have to be proprietary garbage. I could try proprietary trash. It doesn't have the same ring. Proprietary junk, proprietary rubbish, proprietary flotsam and jetsam. That's way too long. Uh, proprietary detritus. Hey, I like that. Proprietary litter. Uh, proprietary filth. Refuse. Waste. How about proprietary feces? Proprietary excrement. Proprietary poo. That's the one we're going with. From now on, it's proprietary poo. I always go back to Xmonad. I always hop to something and then come back to Xmonad. I've been doing this for about 10 years with Xmonad. I keep coming back to it. Why? It's because Xmonad is simply the best. You know, it's like that, that uh, 80s song from Tina Turner. <laughs> You're simply the best. Better than all the rest. That's Xmonad, right? It's simply the best. And the next question I want to read, man, this is a perfect example of I obviously don't delete like negative comments. Hey, DT, you seem to make a lot of mistakes in your videos. How much do you really know about Linux? Well, I would say well, maybe not much, but there's that old saying, fake it till you make it.
And I, I think a lot of people are asking about it because they're curious about the install process for Gen 2. Many people have this misconception that the Gen 2 installation process is really, really hard, really, really difficult. And it's actually not hard at all. But in the last month or so, I find myself more and more opening up Vim instead of Emacs. And I'm not exactly sure why that is. It's not like I no longer like Emacs. I still think Emacs is great. I think it's fantastic. But it's kind of like that 80s pop song. It must have been love, but it's over now. Man, I love that, that logo. That Windows logo looks so good. That's much better than our Linux logos. And we've got all these icons. Where are they going? They're falling into the sys tray on the panel on the test bar here. Wow, and the icons. we got the start menu icon. It's sliding to the center. You're kidding me. <laughs> That's what I've always wanted was a centered task bar, centered start menu. So those were just a few of the highlights from my first 1,000 videos. I do want to thank each and every one of you guys that have supported me over the last four years because honestly, without you guys watching the videos and you know, watching the content, I couldn't do what I do, right? You guys that support me by watching the videos, subscribing, those of you that have supported me financially on Patreon and PayPal or donations of LBC credits over on Odyssey, I sincerely thank each and every one of you guys. And it's been fun. These first 1,000 videos, Videos, you would think I would be tired or burn out or, you know, maybe want to move on to something else. No, no, I still love doing this kind of content and I'm looking forward to the next 1000 videos and I hope you guys are too. Peace.